Good grief. How y'all doing? You doing good? Is it cool to be a T-bird? Yeah. It's a lot more cool to be a Jesus follower, isn't it? Yeah, that was kind of interesting. Y'all been seeing over the last few weeks about being a T-bird and wanting to be accepted. What, what, y'all know what peer pressure is? Anybody know what, what is a peer? You might know what a peer is? Huh? You walk out on a pier and you go fishing sometimes. This is a different kind of peer. What is it? What if you say somebody is your peer, what's that mean? It means that when someone, when someone is, um, like, it's like, um, if someone, he thinks he's cool, mm -hmm. but God, but he, now he thinks that God is cool. Yeah. Cool enough to be cooler than him. Yeah, that's right. That he thinks, that's right. It's a lot cooler to belong to Jesus. A peer is somebody that you hang out with. It's your friends in school. They're your peers. And we talk about wanting to be accepted. Now some of these people who weren't T-birds wanted to be a T-bird. But they weren't cool enough to be a T-bird. Is that ever a problem in school for you? You ever want to be in a group? Because you think, man, that's a pretty special group. But you know, they may want you to do things that you don't feel is quite right to be accepted. Now, who in this room doesn't really want to be accepted? Huh? Raise your hand if you don't really want to be accepted. I mean, everybody does. Don't you want to be liked? Is anybody here that doesn't really want to be liked by other people? Don't you, don't, you, don't you like that? Don't you want to be liked by people? And say, man, he's a cool guy or she is really cool. We all kind of want to do that, don't we? We all want people to like us and accept us. But now sometimes, in order to do that, they may ask you or want you to do things that you don't feel is right. And that's not good, is it? So I'm thinking in the Bible, where in the Bible does it say, I talk about people who, they were asked to do certain things, but they believed in God, and they said, no, I'm trusting God, and I'm going to do this because God wants me to do this. And I don't care what everybody else here does. It's not right for me to do it. So if you don't like me or accept me, I'm sorry. I have to be faithful first to Jesus. And you know who I thought about? In the book of Daniel. Now who wrote Daniel? Daniel. Of course. It wasn't John or Peter. Or, it was Daniel. Now, what, what's, the, what's the story on Daniel? Remember he had three friends? What were those three friends? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, Shadrach. Now, that was the names that the Babylonians gave. You don't remember the other names. Hananiah, what, Azariah, and Mishael were their names when they were Hebrew, when they were in Jerusalem. Remember the Babylonians? conquered them and brought them to Babylon. And how old were they? Were they old people? No, they were very young people. Eh, older, a little bit older than you, maybe 15, 16 years old. So you got Daniel and his three buddies. Well, they're Hebrew. They believe in the God that we worship today. They didn't believe in the idols of Babylon. So when they came there, old King Nebuchadnezzar said, well, when you come to Babylon, you got to do like we do. We're going to give you new names. I think Daniel, actually, you know him more as Daniel, but they call him Belshazzar or something like that. So they gave him new names. But the first thing, if you look at the book of Daniel, is that they were asked to eat the same kind of food that the people in Babylon did. Well, you know, I want to be accepted. I want to be cool. Probably the best thing to do. I'm in Babylon. I need to eat like they do. But no. Because eating like the people in Babylon do would go against God. They worship idols. And a lot of times the king would present the food to the idol before the people. And Daniel and his buddies just said, you know, we can't do that. I mean, even at the risk that they may kill us over this. See, that, it was more important for them 
to be faithful to their God than to be accepted by the people. So what did they do? Remember they talked to him and said, look, give us ten days. We're going to eat nothing but vegetables. Ooh. And drink water and just check us out at the end of ten days and see how it is. If we do that, we won't be going against our God. So the king said, okay, do it. Well, they did, and guess what? They were strong. They were smart. And in fact, they were doing so well that old King Nebuchadnezzar gave them a, 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 a big job to do. Made them important, even though they were from another country. Okay? But the point is, it was more important for them to be true to their God. Okay? And so they didn't have to be like everybody else. They didn't worry about being liked or accepted necessarily if it meant going against what they believed. And that's the same thing true today. Now you're in school, think about it. If you're in school, how many times do you kind of maybe ask to do something to be part of a group that might involve something that you think is just, that's not right. That's going against what Jesus teaches me. They may want you to tell a little story or maybe it involves maybe cheating and not doing right in schoolwork or just doing things that you know is wrong. And if you don't do those things, they kind of look at you and say, well, you're not part of our group. You know, that happens all the time. But see, it's more important if you're a Jesus follower to do the things that Jesus wants you to do and not worry about what everybody else thinks. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you're made fun of. Well, you're not going to do that? No, I really am not because I don't think it's right. But let me tell you from the voice of experience, somewhere down the road you'll be respected for that, for doing the right thing. So you pick up the story and there's old Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and what else happens? So they ate the right food, everything worked out. But then what happens? They do something, and instead of them saying, it's okay, they say, you know what? You're going to die because of this. Remember what it was? What were they asked to do that they knew was wrong because they followed God? Remember what it was? It involved something. How high do you think this ceiling is? Think it's good, what? Max, you think it's 10 feet? 10 foot ceiling? Yes. This involves something maybe nine, nine times yeah. taller than this ceiling. Huge. What Statue. was it? Um, it had the worst of the gold yeah, this big gold idol. It was probably nine or ten times taller than this to worship it. And they said, we can't do that. We don't worship idols. Who do we worship? We worship God and God alone. No other person, no other thing other than the God. And it's the same God we worship today. So what did they say they're going to do to him? Throw him in the fire pit. Yeah, throw him in the furnace. You see, sometimes when you take a stand, there may be a price to pay. But what did God do? He saved him. They threw him in the furnace. Stoked up the fire, got real hot. So hot it killed some people standing around there. And then they look in there, they're just hanging out. And Jesus is in there with them. If you read the story, read the story in Daniel. So God saved them. They stood there. Right. And you know what they said before they went in? It doesn't matter whether God saves us or not. We know that He'll be with us. We believe in Him, and whether we come out dead or alive, it doesn't change our faith. Because sometimes things cost us stuff. When we stand tall for Jesus, sometimes we pay a price for it. But you know what? Jesus said that would happen. If you look in John 16, 33, you know what Jesus said? He didn't say, if you have trouble. He said, when you have trouble. We're going to have problems. Being followers of Jesus, we're going to have problems. But he said, you know what? Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In other words, Jesus says, look, follow me. When you follow me, you're going to have to make some decisions. People may want you to do something that's not right. Don't do it. People make you feel like, well, you're not part of our group if you don't do this. 
and it goes against my teachings, don't do it. And you might have some trouble from that, but I'll always be there with you. I'll always protect you. I'll overcome all those problems for you. I will love you and I'll never leave you. So remember, and it happens to us every day, we have to make decisions that, gee, I really need to decide to do this because I know Jesus wants me to do this. It's not going to be popular. People may not like me for it, but it's more important for me to please Jesus than it is to please other people. Remember what the greatest commandment is? is to love God with all your heart. He said that's the first and greatest commandment. So when we love Him, He's our first priority. We need to please Him first, okay? Okay, very good.